So good evening. We will be conducting this evening's meeting in a virtual setting using Zoom to allow council staff and public to social distance. Members of the public may view and listen to the meeting tonight on WAVE channel 18 and online through the city's YouTube channel. If you would like to participate in live public comment via the Zoom platform, please refer to the agenda for instructions. Pastor Tom Galovich from Valley View Church will be giving the invocation this evening and Mayor Andrietta will begin the meeting immediately after. So Pastor, if you'd like to begin your invocation. Thank you very much. I ask if we bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this opportunity to gather, to do the work of the city of Lincoln. We thank you for your blessings to us. We thank you for your goodness and these opportunities. Lord, I just pray that you will guide our leaders to the best things for Lincoln. We pray that you will bind their minds and their hearts together that they could have unity for our city. And Lord, we also remember Ty Lenahan's family, that you would be with them this evening at the loss of this very, very great man. We ask these things in your precious and holy name. Amen. Thank you very much, Pastor Galovich. Really appreciate it. Okay, um, so it is, uh, oh, it's 5.59. Let's wait one minute. Not even a minute, I don't think. Mm -hmm. Just six o'clock. <clears throat> wow, we are, we are ahead. We are doing good. Most pastors would receive an offering now. I know. <laughs> Too bad for you, we're on Zoom, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it is six o'clock. I call this meeting to order. Uh, may I have the roll call, Ms. Scanlon, please? Yes. Council Member Joyner? Here. Council Member Carlskin? Here. Council Member Lauritsen? Here. Council Member Silhai? Here. And Mayor Andriata? I'm here. Thank you for that. Item number. Um, Four is, oh, I'm sorry, item number three is report from closed session. Uh, Ms. Molikoff, can you give uh, the report on closed session, please? Sure. Thank you, Mayor. Um, we did meet in closed session this afternoon beginning at 4.30, but while staff received direction, there is no reportable action. Okay, thank you for that. Item number four is the Pledge of Allegiance. And, um, you know, I wasn't really sure if I'm the one who's supposed to secure that, um, but I guess so. So, uh, Councilmember Lordson, would you lead the Pledge of Allegiance for us tonight? Myself. Okay, please stand, put your uh, hand over your heart, and repeat after me. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the flag of the United, United States, States of America, America. And, and to the Republic for which, which it stands, one nation under God, and indivisible, with liberty, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you for that. I know you are always so willing to do that when we don't plan ahead. Appreciate it. The mayor, you get to select your victims on that whenever you wish. Yeah, well, you know, I, I forgot about that because I also line up the person for the invocation. So I'm always so focused on that, but I'll have to remember the Pledge of Allegiance too. So thank you, Bill, for doing that. I appreciate it. All right, item number five, agenda modifications. Do we have any agenda modifications from the council? No, nope. nope. is there any requested from staff? Are we all good on that? Okay, thank you. All right, item number six, presentations. Tonight we're gonna uh, be um, given our annual comprehensive financial report. Uh, Justin Williams uh, will present the 2019-2020 annual comprehensive financial report. Good evening, Mayor, Council Members. Hi there. Hello. I'm here. I'll go ahead and share my screen uh, for my presentation. Oh, is that okay? It's, it'll stop that other sharing, right? Yes, that's fine. Okay. Okay. Everybody see that summary of audit results? Yes. Excellent. All right, I'm here to present the audit results for the city for the year ended uh, June 30th, 2021. 
Uh, one thing I'd like to remind council members, members of management, uh, the financial statements themselves are the responsibility of management. And it's our job as the auditor uh, to come in and form an independent opinion on those financial statements to let the users of the financials know whether or not they're fairly stated. So that's the goal of a financial statement audit. So a little bit about our audit process. Uh, we break out our uh, field work um, into two different stages. Uh, the first one, our interim field work we did in June. Uh, it was nice to be back in person again and actually doing the field work in the field at the, the city's offices. So it was good to be doing that again, um, even though of course that could be changing again as we in the environment we live in. But it was nice to be back out there. Um, some of the different things that we do during the interim field work phase. Uh, we do a lot of planning. We review council minutes, meeting minutes. Uh, since the uh, last time we we're out there the prior year, uh, we review if there's any significant, significant agreements that were new during the year. We look at those to make sure those are getting addressed in our audits. Uh, if there's been any changes in uh, policies or procedures that we need to be aware of, we make sure we incorporate that. And then um, a lot of inquiry and uh, interviews with different members of management and staff. Uh, another big part is of that um, interim field work time is documentation and testing of the different internal controls and financial processes. Uh, four of the main areas that we look at, we look at what procedures and controls you have in place over any revenue um, that comes into the city. Uh, we also look at controls over cash disbursements, making sure there's proper approvals, uh, timeliness of disbursements, uh, things are being coded properly. Uh, also look at payroll, payroll and HR functions as well, making sure that there's appropriate controls over pay rates, uh, approval of payroll, timely payroll, et cetera. Also look at the financial reporting, what controls you have in place over how things are recorded in your accounting system, and then ultimately roll up into your um, year-end uh, trial balance that we use to compile your financial statements. Uh, also, another part of the financial reporting controls we look at is uh, approval of different journal entries. We look at uh, making sure that um, timely reports during the year are getting reviewed and approved as well. If we had any findings in the prior year, they're usually the result of this time of uh, field work when we're looking at the different controls and processes. So if we had any related to any of those areas in the prior year, we make sure to review those to see whether or not they've been implemented. And if there's any additional uh, recommendations that we have, we start to put those together during this time as well. So once the books are closed, usually takes a couple months uh, for that, uh, for finance to get uh, ready to uh, for us to be able to do our audit, they go to close everything, prepare a lot of schedules, do a lot of year-end entries. So we come out October is when we do most of our June 30th year-end audits, um, at least those that are, are ready, like the city of Lincoln. Um, I think this is the, the part of the audit that most people think of, of an audit, because it's the testing of the numbers. So it's the testing of the balances at year-end at June 30th, as well as activity throughout the year. Uh, there's an example of a few different types of tests we do. Uh, confirmation of balances, we send out confirmations directly to third parties, such as financial institutions, um, who respond directly back to us uh, with the debt balances. So it's a good uh, good test for, uh, for um, audit uh, substantiation of the numbers. Cutoff testing is another big one. Um, it's generally a higher risk area. Oftentimes organizations, uh, cities are, are really good at doing day-to-day -day transactions throughout the year. You get to a year end, such as your cutoff being June 30th. Um, I mentioned there's different types of accrual entries and things that are done at year end. There's just a little bit more likelihood for error. So we look at uh, transactions that occur on both sides of that year end date to make sure things are recorded in the uh, proper time frame. Also look at detailed tests of transactions where we um, select uh, detailed samples and um, request supporting doc, uh, documentation and backup for those to make sure that uh, the amounts are correct, that they're for the uh, recorded in proper funds, et cetera. Also do analytics, which is more high level review of information where we're looking at different ratios. Uh, we'll look at different trend analysis and different balances to make sure that they meet our uh, expectations. Also do a single audit, uh, which is an audit of federal grants. And then we begin the preparation of the financial statements. Uh, the financial statements, the city does elects to pre uh, prepare um, an annual comprehensive financial report. 
Um, it's not a requirement, but it shows that the city and the finance wants to go a little bit above and beyond to do this um, optional report. The only real requirement is that middle section there, the financial section that you have to do, which has which is our audit report, the management's discussion and analysis and the financial statements. Uh, the annual comprehensive financial report includes at the part at the beginning, the introductory introductory section, as well as the statistical section that goes at the back of the financials, just provides the user and the reader of the financials with some additional information about the city. In terms of the audit itself, um, once we're done with all of our audit procedures, we report the results of the audit using five different reports or, or documents. Now, the first one's our audit opinion. Uh, we also do a government audit standards report, a single audit report, and then two separate letters, the communication with those charged with governance, and then the management letter. So I will go over the results of each of those. Uh, the first one, as I mentioned, the independent auditors report, that's our main report. That is our report on your financial statements. There are four different types of opinions that an uh, auditor can issue, uh, unmodified, qualified, adverse, or disclaimer. Unmodified is what you want, and that's what we have here. It's a clean audit opinion. And it says, it basically means that their uh, financial statements as presented are material, materially correct. So definitely good news there. Uh, the next report we issue is our government audit standards report. And that the main, the majority of the uh, government audit standards um, apply to us as the auditors. Uh, we're required to have additional training to do governmental audits, and um, there's different things that we have to have in our internal controls to make sure that we're in compliance with the government audit standards. Uh, the way that it affects the city um, is if we have any findings um, in your internal controls, we're required to put them um, in one of three categories, a material weakness, a significant deficiency, or a control deficiency. If any of these rise to the level of material weakness or significant deficiency, we include these in this government audit standards report. It's in a prescribed format. And I, I showed this little uh, chart here to, just to illustrate the um, improvements that the city has made over the last several years in, in terms of the different uh, findings and internal controls that we've had. Um, we do have a separate management letter, which are still some recommendations to be done, but those can be considered pretty minor. The main ones here are material weaknesses and significant deficiencies, as well as compliance exceptions. Um, but as you can see there, um, in 2018, there were two material weaknesses, four significant deficiencies, and three compliance exceptions. And then over the last several years, um, the city management has worked to, um, to get these down. Many of these uh, just due to the nature of them, uh, could not have been resolved within a year or even two anyway. Um, so it's pretty uh, um, good that they were resolved just in that time frame. And, and as you can see in 2021, there were no material weaknesses, significant efficiencies or compliance exceptions. So definitely very good news there. I mentioned, can we have, yeah. Um, with last year, we did still have uh, the material weakness related to special assessment debt funds that had carried over a couple of years that was implemented. Um, and then we had the one significant deficiency last year as well related to capital assets. And again, that was implemented um, in the current year as well. So good news. Uh, I mentioned uh, the other report that we issue, our single audit report. This is um, our audit on the federal funds. Uh, any organization in the U.S. that receives more than 70 or 750000 in federal funds has to get this additional single audit. And uh, the city obviously gets quite a bit of federal funds. And so this year, there were two major programs that we audited. There's different um, calculations that we have to go through to determine which um, grants uh, get, uh, get audited in a given year, which means there are major programs. So those are the two, the highway planning as well as the coronavirus relief funds uh, were the federal programs that we audited this year. Just additional procedures that we go through to make sure that um, expenditures are being um, spent in accordance with the grant, as well as different federal uh, requirements for uh, federal grants. Unmodified, clean opinion, no issues with the federal funding at all. So good news there. 
aside from those other reports, we issued two separate letters. Uh, we call this one the SAS 114. It stands for Statement of Auditing Standard Number 114. Um, in addition to our audit opinion, we're required to communicate um, to you as the council other certain other items under the audit standards. Uh, if you had any new accounting policies that were implemented during the current year, there was one, GASB 84 was implemented, changed the, um, the look of the financials in terms of the fiduciary activities, nothing too crazy there. It just uh, reported a little bit different, differently now. We're also required to let you know if there are any estimates in your financials. All financial statements are going to have some sort of estimate, nothing unusual. We're just required to let you know uh, what they are. Uh, depreciation, allowance for uncollectible accounts, the allowance for the notes, uh, estimate for the city's uh, post-closure um, environmental landfill liability, and then the unfunded pension and OPEB liabilities. All those by their nature are considered to be an estimate either because there's uh, an actuary for the last two or some sort of estimate. Again, nothing unusual, we're just required to let you know. Um, if there are any major changes in disclosures or any difficulties in performing the audit, uh, we would let you know um, in this letter. Um, just as an example, several years ago, uh, we had significant delays in, in getting information and the audit was, was really delayed. So during it must, it was 2018, uh, this particular letter would have addressed that and said we had, uh, um, there were delays in receiving audit information, therefore the audit was completed late. But as you can see, that has not occurred. The audit's been uh, done timely the last, last two years. Another uh, thing I'd like to point out, we're required to let you know if we had any audit adjustments. What audit adjustments are is we're presented at the beginning of the audit or the beginning of the year end phase of the audit uh, with your books of record, essentially your trial balance, your year end accounting. If during the course of the audit, we have to, we note any errors or have to make any changes to those numbers, those are called an, called an audit adjustment. Almost always we have a few. Um, there's almost always a few things for accounting, timing um, the, uh, of the audit, we have a few of them. Um, we had a lot in 2018, as you can see, we had over 50. Um, and that also is right in line with what I mentioned earlier with the issues, with the controls, the material weaknesses, all that. As you can see, those have, those have gone down and we're down to six, which is, is very reasonable. Um, and uh, for a city the size of Lincoln, it, it, it's pretty, pretty common. I'd like to see that drop down a couple more next year, but it's still really good. We also had two, what we call immaterial adjustments, very minor um, adjustments uh, that were done. I mentioned earlier that if we have any uh, major uh, issues with your internal controls, we're, we consider them to mater be material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. Those get reported on that uh, government audit standards report. And there were none of those. Um, however, we had a couple that are more like general recommendations for improvement on this uh, management letter. Um, again, not as significant as the material weaknesses or significant deficiencies, but uh, definitely things finance is going to want to look into and, and uh, work on correcting these going forward. So in summary, uh, we had an unmodified or clean opinion on the financial statements, no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies or compliance exceptions. That's great news. We had the five items on the management letter, things that could still you know, use a little bit of improvement in terms of processes and controls. Uh, the audit was filed timely again this year, um, second year in a row, maybe third, uh, second for sure. And then again, as I showed in that one chart, the continued improvement in the financial processes and internal control city uh, management's done a great job in the last couple of years of, of improving things um, and you know, getting the controls and, and processes in order. I will stop sharing my screen. there's any questions for me. And I, I would like to say though, before, if there's any questions is that um, Sandra, Ms. Cook and, and the rest of their, the finance staff does a great job um, in, in uh, preparing the amount of information. Um, I'm sure she can attest to the number of items and, and requests that we, we make in, um, in order to be able to perform this audit. So to end up with really good audit results like that, especially continued improvement, um, really says a lot about the quality of the, the finance staff that you have there. All right, thank you, Justin, very much. I really appreciate that information. Um, it is so wonderful to have such a clean report. I mean, that, that is just uh, very thrilling.
And so thank you for that. Thank you for, uh, thank you staff, Sandra and Ruthann and all of the accounting staff um, for their hours and hours and hours of, of work. Really, really appreciate it. So um, let's go to the council and see if you have any questions or comments. Uh, council member Joyner. Uh, no questions. I'll just reflect uh, what you've already stated. This is uh, a really good report. I'm pleased to see it. I'm pleased to see the consistent improvement uh, and, and let's keep going. Let's, uh, let's get better and better as we go along. I agree. Thank you. Council member Carlos Skint. You're muted. Dan. I, I will uh, reiterate what Paul said, having sat through at least 13 years of these, it, uh, is nice to have one that's zero, zero, zero. I did have one question that something I don't understand. And I don't think I've ever seen it before. Uh, in the single audit on page six, it looks like which is audit qualif audit T qualified as a low risk audit T. No, that sounds like we're a high risk. Why, why? I've never seen that. There is no, yeah, that's that's a good question. Um, so what that means is for the purposes of a single audit in order to qualify as low risk, you have to have three consecutive years of unmodified opinions, which you do. Uh, the audit has to be filed timely three consecutive years in a row. And the, the single audit is required to be filed within um, nine months after your year end. And so next year, that will be you okay. that will drop to a low risk oddity. The, the only way that really affects the, um, the city is for the single audit is affects the um, how much um, expenditures or how many different federal programs are required to test. If you are a not a low risk, we have to make sure we test at least 40% of your total federal expenditures. If you are considered to be low risk, that number can drop down to 20%. So it's a requirement of how many um, federal programs we need to test. But again, I expect that that, that will go to a, a yes next year. Thank you very much. That was the only question. Okay, thanks. Council Member Lauritsen. Yes, I want to thank Sandra for the good work that you've done. Um, it's, it's great to have a uh, uh, unqualified uh, 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 financial report, and it, and it gives the, uh, the city council uh, good information for which to make decisions. Thank you. Thank you. And council member Sohai. Yeah, I just would like to thank our staff because having um, this presentation is much different than my first year on councils. And I know that that means that there was a lot of work in those three years between it, changing a lot of processes and putting a lot of effort into getting us here. And it was nice to sit through that presentation, like Dan said, to see those zeros at the end. So thank you for the presentation and for the work that it represented. Good, awesome. Okay, so let's go out to the public. Are there any public comments on this uh, presentation, Ms. Gannon? Yes, Mayor, uh, we do have a hand raised. Richard Pearl, please go ahead. It's there, there we go. Thank you. Uh, Justin, first, let me just uh, congratulate you and the firm on the professionalism that you brought uh, to this process. I know how difficult it is. I know we are a very complex city and you have, uh, uh, really brought a lot of professionalism to us. It, Like Dan, I have seen the highs and the lows of our financial statements, and it is such a pleasure to see a great audit come out of this. So thank you, and certainly thanks to the staff uh, and to the city council for continuing to make significant improvements on, on so many areas. All right, thank you, Mr. Pearl. Any other comments? No, Mayor, no other hands are raised. Okay, thank you. All right, well, bring it Mark's back up. Mark's hand is raised. What? Mark's hand is raised. Uh -oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, bring it back to council and staff. Uh, go ahead, Mark. I Sorry, I haven't figured out how to use that little yellow hand. Um, I couldn't see you. They, yeah, it's my fault. I just wanted to ask Justin a quick question, if I could. Um, there is some... Um, 
question in the world about how the ARPA funds will get audited. Um, and one of the things that I've read is that there's a possibility that our annual audit will require um, either as part of the single audit or separately that our annual auditor audit that. I'm, I'm wondering if there's any truth to that or if that's just rumor. No, there definitely is truth to that. So those, the ARPA funds uh, will will be audited uh, the same way and as the federal federal funds. So they now granted that the requirements related all this different types of uh, federal funding is constantly changing, um, but those will fall fall under the single audit um, and be audited as part of the the federal federal single audit. Is there some way that we can? Um get some training and advice from your firm as we go into the spending of those ARPA funds so that we know what kinds of things we need to be doing to make sure that we're easily auditable? Yes, we can. Um, we'll, we'll talk to Sandra about that. Um, we as the auditors have to be a little careful um, for in, in terms of independence rules um, because we can't for example, if you say, if you come to us and say, can we spend it on all of this? And I give you an opinion. Yes, that, that sounds good. I can't come back later and audit what I approved. So we have to be a little bit careful of that, but we can definitely provide you with different resources um, and, and th to make sure that you're spending them in accordance with the, with the requirements for sure. That'd be great. I, I also wanted to say thank you to you and your firm. Um, and uh, thank you for the nice comments about our staff that certainly d deserve them. Um, we also had a couple of good, very good consultants that worked with us on this process. And I know Sandra would want me to acknowledge them, Stephanie Beauchene and, and Sheldon Ch Chavin, Chavin uh, who have also done a lot of work for us. So it was a, a big team effort and we, we appreciate the good working relationship with your firm. Definitely. It's our pleasure. It's been great to see the, the progress over these last few years of improvements. Yeah, thank you for that. Okay, any last comments from council? I right. just yes. one. We yeah, had previously, um, I think, unanimously wanted to pass this on to the uh, FIOP committee for review. Yes. Um, is that an action that we actually have to take at this point, or have we already decided that and it will just, as a matter of course, find its way there. Mark? We're planning on uh, providing it to them tomorrow. Perfect. Not at a meeting, but, but distributing the documents tomorrow. To be reviewed and then they'll right. discuss their first meeting. Okay. Right. Thank you. All right. that, that's a good question, Councilmember Joyner. Thank you. So thanks again, Justin. Really appreciate you and your firm and, and all the work. And um, just to say again, I, I remember sitting through those years of the reports being super late and you know the public is mad and where's the audit and um so i just i feel i feel really proud at this moment uh of the work that our staff has done and uh that the decisions that we try to make and so it's really great to sit here and listen to you tell us good news so thank you very much again really appreciate your time and uh we hope you have a, a good evening thank you thank you all right Okay, so um, that takes us to item number seven, public comment. So these, this is the time for public to speak on any item that is not on the agenda. Um, Ms. Gallen, do we have any public comment? Uh, yes, we do. Albert Scheiber, please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, thank you, Albert Scheiber. Um, I'd just like to uh, recap uh, a little bit of the last uh, regular city council meeting. There was a uh, Sigma presentation. Um, after the presentation, uh, I made uh, some public comments uh, regarding uh, the city's uh, plans as it, as it is stated in their, um, their documents, city documents, uh, EIRs, et cetera. Um, and one, one of those many comments I tried to make was that, uh, you know, essentially the city is planning to overpump uh, groundwater. Uh, after the public comments, uh, council had had the opportunity to ask questions and make comments. I appreciate Ms. Andreata uh, 
posing some questions. I thought that was great. I, I wish there was more from more of the council. Um, but anyway, um, Mr. Carl Skitt at that time um, made his comments uh, where he acknowledged that in 2011, the city uh, over pumped um, the groundwater uh, creating a, a problem. Um, he also acknowledged that at that time there was no drought. It was just a uh, normal rainfall, rain, you know, normal rain uh, season, uh, no drought. Uh, and he also acknowledged that um, it has the, the uh, groundwater table has not recovered. Um, well, it recovered all but seven feet. Um, so in acknowledging all of that, it, it is very frustrating uh, that uh, the city in their own documents plans on pumping more than that at full build out with all the wells they want to put in. Um, and I don't know if it's seven feet, one feet, 10 feet, if the, if the water table hasn't recovered in over 10 years, you guys did something really wrong. You broke something. And now, according to your own documents, especially in, in times of drought, you're going to up that number of gallons exponentially. And it's in your own documents. And then you sit there and you approve stuff. This stuff isn't new. Mr. Uh, Carl Skitt and Mr. Joyner approved this in Village 5 like four years ago. So this is nothing new to you. It's nothing new to Sigma. But yet you continue to push forward, even though you're planning on damaging the groundwater table. And I know I'm out of time, so I'll wrap it up. My, my point is also that Sigma is ignoring this because it's been pointed out to them several times. And it's just frustrating to see you're going to damage the groundwater table and it's in your own documents that that's what you're going to do. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Cyber. Any more comments, Ms. Scanlon? Uh, I don't see any other hands that are raised, Mayor. Okay, thank you. Okay, so that takes us to um, item number eight, the consent agenda. All matters on the consent agenda are considered routine business and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a member of the city council or resident requests a specific item be removed from the consent agenda for separate action. Any items removed will be considered after the remainder of the consent agenda. So do any of my colleagues wish to remove an item from the consent agenda this evening? Madam Mayor, I'd like to remove item 8J and item 8L, please. Okay. 8J and 8L. Okay. Thank you. Anybody else? Okay. Ms. Callan, is there anybody from the public that would like to request that we... Yes. Uh, Albert Scheiber, which item? 8P, as in Paul, please. Okay, Mayor, that's the only hand that was raised. Okay, great. All right, so then can I have a motion to approve the rest of the agenda? So moved. Okay, so I think uh, that was uh, Council or uh, Mayor Pro Tem uh, Joiner, uh, and then uh, Councilman Lordson for the second. Yes. So do I have a roll call? Yes, Councilmember Joiner. Aye. Councilmember Lordson. Aye. Councilmember Carl Skint. Aye. Councilmember Silhai. Yes. And Mayor Andriata. Yes. Okay, so let's start with 8J. This is adopt resolution 2022-17, appointing the city manager or uh, his designee as the city of Lincoln's real property negotiator relative to the sale of surplus city of Lincoln, the parcel on the southwest corner of Joyner Parkway and First Street. Right. So, uh, Madam Mayor, my reason for pulling both of these items, yeah. is that I'm going to recuse we myself. Can... I don't actually think I need to, quite okay. frankly, but given the, the recent climate uh, of, of people looking so desperately for wrongdoing, 
Um, I'm, I'm just going to say that uh, item 8J is choosing a negotiator uh, for the sale of city property at the corner of First and Joiner. Um, my family owns property within 400 feet of that. And so that's my reason for recusal there. The other uh, is 8L, which is coming up as well. That's reclaimed water at Joiner Park. Again, I don't think I need to recuse myself from it, but we do own property directly adjacent to that. And someone might perceive uh, okay. a connection there as well. So I'm going to recuse myself from both. I'm going to turn off my camera, mute my mic, and uh, I guess be back after uh, you've taken action on those. Okay. And council member joiner, I will text you when that time comes. All right. I, okay. I don't think I need to sign out completely, do I, Christine? No. Just, just turn everything off. Turn everything off. Yep. Okay. All right. So, um, I so uh, I, I figured that's why he was pulling those. Um, and so, unless somebody has an actual question uh, or wants to talk about these, can we go ahead and just uh, take a motion on these, Christine? Or do we need to actually open it up? I I think because they have technically been pulled, you do okay. need to open okay. each item up for some public comment since okay. it wasn't. Yeah. Okay. That, that makes sense. That's fine with me. Okay. So let's start with 8J. Um, are there any comments or questions from the council on this? Okay. How about the public? Any comments or questions on 8J? No hands are raised, Mayor. Okay. Can I have a motion to approve the... the move, uh, move approval of 8J. Second. Okay. We have a roll call. Yes. Thank you. Council Member Carskin? Yes. Council Member Silhai? Yes. Council member Lauritsen? Yes. Mayor Andriata? Yes. Okay. And then 8L uh, was a resolution 2022 19, approving the plans and technical specifications and authorized staff to proceed with the bidding process for construction of Joyner Park reclaimed water capital improvement project. Do the council have any questions or comments on this item? Okay. Seeing none, are there any comments from the public on this item? No hands are raised, Mayor. Okay, may I have a motion, please? Move approval of 8L. I'll second. Thank you. Council Member Carlskin? Yes. Yeah. Council Member Lauritsen? Yes. Council Member Silhai? Yes. And Mayor Andriata? Yes. Okay, and then, uh, so let's let's have uh, Mayor Pro Tem Joyner come back. I'm here, Mayor. Okay, great, thank you. All right, Mr. Scheiber pulled 8P, adopt resolution 2022-23, authorizing the city manager to execute a contract for services with management advisory services for retention of Paul Richardson as planning consultant at a cost not to exceed $84,100. Um, so let's find out what the question was first. Mr. Scheiber, um, what's your question on, on this uh, item? Yeah, thank you. Uh, my question is more, well, I have a quick comment and then a question. So my, my comment is I've watched over the last number of months where uh, staff uh, that you're trying to retain has gotten raises and or promotions with new job titles, so on and so forth. I understand why you're doing it. I get that, you know, but when you read the staff report, it's funded because all the vacancies you have. So um, I'm, I'm wondering when, when you fill these vacancies, how are you gonna fund this stuff? Because, you know, um, if you fund all the vacancies and you've already given all these raises out, uh, where's that money coming from? Because, you know, you're always saying you don't have money for police and fire, but yet these other staff positions always seem to get filled and, and, and raised. As I, so I'm, that's my question is, where's the money coming from? Thanks. Okay, good question. Uh, Mr. Scott, would you like to address that question? Um, <clears throat> sure. Uh, in this particular case, I think I think Mr. Shiver's question is more generic, but in this particular case, um, the 
the amount of money we would be spending on a planning director um, would far exceed, you know, with the whole benefit package and everything would far exceed the amount of money um, that we'd be spending on this contract. Now he won't be the director. He's a consultant, but, but we don't have a director and we haven't had one um, since the end of November. So there's a substantial amount of money that we have not spent um, for planning services that we are now able to, uh, we're able to put somebody in there who's got expertise enough to help us with those issues. And we're able to fund it from a large pool of money that has been unspent um, since Steve Prosser left. Okay, thank you. I'd also like to just remind Mr. Scheiber and the public that a lot of these positions um, or some of them um, are, are funded through different funds, um, whereas police and fire are strictly general fund. Uh, that's that's correct, right, Mr. Scott? That's correct. Okay. Um, and so uh, money comes from different places. Um, and so that's why um, public safety is more of a struggle than others. Okay, uh, any questions or comments from the council on 8P? Okay, seeing none, are there any other comments or questions from the public? Uh, Mayor, I don't see any hands raised. Okay, thank you. Can I have a motion then, please? Move that we adopt resolution 2022-23. Second. Hey, can I have a roll call, please? Yes, council member Joyner? Yes. Council member Carlskin? Yes. Council member Lauritsen? Yes. Council member Silhai? Yes. And Mayor Andreata? Yes, thank you for that. All right, item number nine, public hearings. We do not have any public hearings tonight. Item number 10, general business. 10A is to have a discussion regarding continued findings made pursuant to AB 361 as part of resolution 2022-10 adopted January 11th, 2022, allowing for remote meetings. Um, our city attorney, Ms. Molenkoff will give the staff report on this. Thank you. I will be relatively brief. I did not prepare a formal staff report for this. Um, as indicated, the city council at our last regular meeting did adopt findings to um, implicate the AB 361 ability for us to meet remotely as we are doing this evening without the necessity of the rather onerous posting requirements for remote meetings that currently exist under the Brown Act. And so uh, with those findings, I, I was asked to come back at this point in time and give you sort of a, an opportunity to talk about it to see whether you wanted to continue those. They are, if there's no action on this item, they uh, are in place until through our next meeting, at which point in time you will need to take formal action on a resolution if you wish to continue the AB 361 findings. And so I think everyone um, on this Zoom meeting probably has some anecdotal evidence about exposures, quarantining, um, and, and kind of their own personal experiences about what's going on out there in our local community and the greater Placer area. But so I wanted to just pull some actual statistical information to share with you so that you could take that um, in, into consideration when you have your discussion. So we did recently receive on January 20th, our biobot data, as we discussed at the last meeting. This is a collection of samples that is taken from our regional sewer plant. And um, the, just in summary, the reports from our sample base, which would have taken place in the two weeks before the January 20th report, um, show that we have a higher concentration of COVID over 68% of other samplings from other jurisdictions that they sample um, in the last six weeks. According to our data from that BioBot report, and now just recall that report only samples data from our plant. So it's only taking it from those samples that are in our collection area, which is Lincoln, and then also the SMD1 um, flow that comes through uh, the, out the unincorporated area of Placer County. So there were 414 new cases in Placer County as of the sample date with an average of 495.1 cases per day over the last seven days. 
So I wanted to compare and contrast that with the county's COVID dashboard report that was uh, updated as of yesterday, January 24th. So of course this reaches the entire county of Placer, so it's a different sampling poll, but that indicated that there is an average daily uh, reporting of cases of 592.71. Um, and then I also wanted to provide you with some of what I've heard from council as being uh, critical data that re relates to hospitalizations and availability of beds. So as of January 20th, 2022, which was the most current information available on Placer County website, there were 200 confirmed in hospital of which 161 were hospitalized because of COVID and there were 33 that were in ICU. The current bed availability as of January 23rd is 18 beds um, and that's in spread amongst Placer County's three hospitals and there are 18 ICU beds available as of January 23rd. And so with that uh, kind of a nibble of information. I wanted to turn it back over to council. I'm happy to take any questions um, and give us guidance as to how council wishes to proceed with the AB 361 findings and remote meetings. Okay, thank you, Ms. Monkoff, appreciate that. All right, council, uh, questions, comments, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Joyner. Um, I guess I'll out myself a little bit. Uh, I would not be able to be here tonight uh, due to multiple positive COVID uh, results, were it not for our ability to, to do this meeting on Zoom. Um, and my understanding is we can't go to a hybrid version. Um, and so absent this tool, um, I would be missing uh, this council meeting and, and potentially future council meetings as well. I'm, I'm now being told that I can be perfectly healthy and still test positive for many weeks to come. Uh, so that, that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it's a possibility. So, <laughs> so um, out of an abundance of caution, uh, I'd, I'd be supportive of at least keeping the option open for us to continue to do Zoom meetings as long as it makes sense. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Carlos Kent. Well, I agree with that. I. Uh would have a debate with myself uh, about attending this meeting um, because we just got back from a trip and uh, haven't had time to completely test out and you're supposed to self quarantine. You know, I might not have done that, but uh, I like the ability that if if uh, uh, <laughs> if we have the, we have the capacity to self quarantine uh, uh, by using Zoom, uh, and we this is the only way you can do it, then I want to continue it. I also have on a side note, and and this has nothing to do with the resolution or the. Uh, findings that we made. It's just for the first time in a long time, I have understood every word said in the meeting. Uh, but that's my effect. Because of the technology in the room with all the echoes and the Yes, yes. All right. So. Okay, Council Member Lordson. I have to go along with my colleagues, uh, you know, if they think it's a good idea to hold off for a while before going back to a um, in-person meeting, then, you know, I have to go along with that, so. Okay. Uh, Council member, so hi. Yeah, I'll echo all those comments. I don't think that the conditions have changed at all from last time when um, I put it on the agenda when we last met. I would not have been able to attend that meeting had I tested positive because I had just had a close contact. Um, and it was too late to be able to just stay home because it was post when the agenda went out. So I would have just had to miss the vote. We have business to take care of and we have things that I'd like to be on record, you know, for commenting on and being a decision maker on it's the whole reason why you know the public elects us and so I think that until we are in a situation where it's not running rampant particularly given this 
the guidelines around how you're allowed to interact with exposures to COVID in the workplace. There's like, you know, employer mandates in place. I think it's irresponsible for us not to. I mean, we could find ourselves potentially three or four of us having had a close COVID contact, having some sort of symptom, and all of a sudden not being able to show up to vote and, and the people's business doesn't get done. So I think that it might be really irresponsible for us not to continue it, at least for this month. Okay. Uh, when you say for this month, do you mean through the first meeting? February. Of, for the next, for, for, the, you know, for the next whole month? So it's, it, sorry. yeah, I know every 30 will, days, but I got my yeah, five. We will, trying we, will to have to, we will have to bring a resolution before council at the next regular city council meeting in February in order to continue them. If you want to continue those five. Days. Correct. Okay. But we can do that virtually. Correct. Christy. <clears throat> yes. We don't have to meet again. And so then it's good for 30 days. And if the conditions somehow change, we can choose not to continue to implement the provisions and proclaim the emergency conditions are gone and go back to in person. Correct. Um, but right now the conditions aren't changed and I don't want to be caught where we're in a position where either our staff, I mean, our staff can log on, but where we can't, we can't participate. We can't come, we can't vote. We, you know, we can't have the public come to our house if we are sick, if we're not sick, but we're just in quarantine and it's passed when the agenda has been posted, we can't participate because we can't do hybrid that way. Um, I think we get ourselves potentially caught up in a situation that's not good. Okay, thanks. All right, so let's go out to um, the public and see if there's any comment on this. Yes, Mayor, I do have a hand raised. Uh, Byron Chapman, please go ahead. So apparently Mr. Chapman has lost his uh, audio uh, mayor and he was the only okay. hand okay. raised. Wow. That's unfortunate. So, okay. All right. Um, if he comes back on then we can go back to him, Gwen, um, or if he's able to let you know that he can talk. I mean, I don't know how he can, but if he can, I'm, I'm willing well, to let he's, him. He's raising his hand, but there is no audio. So I can't allow him to speak. Okay. I'm not sure what. Not sure why. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. So we'll bring it back uh, to council. So, you know, um, obviously nobody wants to um, put anybody at risk or whatever. And um, I know that um, the data that we had um, was, you know, still pretty high. Um, but that was a little while ago. And I think that, um, I think pretty soon we're going to be on the downside of this. So I don't have a problem with, um, with extending it for a little while. Um, I just want to be really careful that we're not, that we're not going to just be comfortable with like, oh, well, let's just go back to zoom and zoom indefinitely. I mean, even though we have to bring it forward every 30 days, because the, the truth of it is that this is, COVID is going to be with us, just like the cold, just like the flu. I realize it's different, but it's it's going to be with us. And and in a normal life, when somebody has the flu, they stay home. When somebody is sick, they stay home. Um, and uh, and I'm I'm not unsympathetic because you know I my family was in the same situation. Um, so I and I don't want to put anybody you know at risk. But my question is, okay. How, how long, how long are we willing to, you know, to uh, prolong this? I was really hoping to come back um, February 8th. We have two um, really special proclamations to do. Um, and I wanna do that in person. Um, if we wanna hold off and do that at the end of February, we can and see where we are there. So I don't disagree with all of you, but I wanna be really careful that we're not just, you know, um, gonna slide back into the convenience of staying home and being on Zoom. And so as long as that's not what we're talking about, I'm okay with you know keeping it for one more meeting and then seeing where we are. Um, but I don't I don't want to go a whole nother month on Zoom without having some kind of discussion about it. So okay. Thank you, Mayor. Um, Mr. Chapman is back on and I Great. will contact those two applicants of proclamation and um, ask to continue that to the February 22nd meeting. Okay. So Mr. Chapman, please go, go ahead. ahead. Can you hear me, Gwen? Yes. Thank you. Uh, 
Madam Mayor and Council Members and City Staff Byron Chapman on the 12 bridges. Um, yes, regarding the uh, using the Zoom, um, it basically, uh, maybe it's helpful for all of us to realize or know from the Council, uh, what are the numbers that we get to, um, to where we can finally say, yes, we can come back into personal meetings. Uh, what those meeting are, those numbers are, I know that uh, we're watching it, whether it goes up, whether it goes down. Uh, I think it would be helpful for all of us because uh, we get information from different sources when it comes to this type of information as to when we could eventually get back to the, the actually face-to-face -face if we could. Uh, again, I understand the seriousness of it uh, by all means. If, if necessary, that's what we do. But I think it's helpful for us to realize that we indeed, I agree with the mayor, that we certainly need to uh, push to try to get back to as close to what normal is possible. Uh, and again, I realize that uh, we don't know what the numbers are at this point, but I think it would be helpful for us to know maybe in an e-bulletin or something where it comes out and lets us know that yes, the numbers are down, this is what we're looking at, and then we can get back on the track. So thank you for your time. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. I'm glad you were able to get back on. All right, are there any other um, comments? No, no. Oh, go ahead. No other. No, no other comment, okay. All right, on the council, any other questions or comments? So I think the direction we need to give is for Christine to bring back yeah. uh, that resolution. We can choose how to act on it when she does so, but but okay. we need to give direction that that be brought on, back. On February 8th, I, I do have a question and maybe, maybe you guys answer this when our multiple conversations about AB 361. Alyssa, maybe you can give some clarity. So my question is um, on February 8th, if we come back and we feel like that we still want to make the facts and findings to allow our, um, to carry it over for the committees and the commissions to meet by Zoom, um, because we've got lots of different folks, you know, participating in those, but we as a council want to come back in person. Is that allowed or is it all or nothing? It is supposed to be all or nothing. It, okay. They are dictated by our actions. Our, okay. Because either, the circumstances right or exist or they, or they don't. don't okay that's and i, I will just okay. note since i'm talking um i understand what is being said about hey COVID is here it's going to be circulating we need a sense of normalcy however fortunately unfortunately depending on your political persuasion we also just are governing a city in the state of california and they are ultimately in charge of osha requirements they're in charge of guidelines and it and we are employees of this. Sorry, he's going to bed. <laughs> um, we are in. We are subject to those requirements. We are employees as council members. We receive a paycheck. We are legal employees of the city of Lincoln, which means we are subject to those requirements. So even if we're not sick, but there is a, a an employer mandate that you may not have somebody who has been exposed to COVID come into the workplace we are required to get a test and it has to test negative before we can come, right? And it has to be five days after. So let's say I get exposed on a Saturday. Well, Tuesday is not five days after that. So negative, positive, it doesn't matter. I now have to miss council. But what if we already posted our, we, we posted our agenda on Friday. So I'm, I'm not sick. I don't know if I'm sick or not, but legally I'm not allowed to commingle with other employees. So now what if all three of us out of five have that situation and the city business just doesn't get done. So whether COVID's here to stay or not, I'm, in my mind um, is almost a moot point because that also means that there is enough circulating that there's the expectation that we might be commingling with people who are ill because it's so rampant in the community that satisfies that health and safety requirement. And so um, for me, I think that is really where my my comfort level becomes very uncomfortable is that because we're operating under these um, conditions that we might not be able to get business done, but they are all predicated on the prevalence of COVID right now. So I don't think that those will probably still, even if those employer you know, requirements are happening in March, I don't think that it will be circulating with such. Um, no, I think it's, it's veracity. I, I, yeah, I think it's already going down. Like I know, uh, and this is just anecdotal, but it, at my school, like two weeks ago, 
Um, we had a great percentage of kids that were all out sick or on quarantine. Today, they were almost all back. So I think it's making its way. I think that in just a little bit, it's going to be pretty much, you know, waning, hopefully. Um, but again, and I get what you're saying, um, Alyssa, but again, I mean, for how, like, you know, yeah, okay. And I think those, you know, employer things, they change all the time. I just don't think that we can, you know, just continue to just keep dragging it out till God knows when. Right. So, but I, I understand your point and I'm not, I'm not disagreeing that we should at least hold it over till February 8th. I just want to be clear that, you know, I think, I think it's on the downs downside and we'll look at the data and we'll see where we are on February 8th, but I'm not interested in like March, April being on zoom. Um, I That's don't what's think great about that. the 30 day, right? Yeah. Every 30 days, we have to make a new proclamation that has facts and findings yeah. that support it. And so either the facts and findings are there or they're not. Yeah. So yeah. we're not binding ourselves to anything yeah. past February. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Dan, Dan go was, ahead. I, I yeah, see your hand. Anecdotal. Both Starbucks were closed uh, everything except the one had drive-through. Yeah, and it's all because of yeah uh, the this variant. Omicron. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I yeah. yeah, no, I know that. And I, like I, I agree. You're like serious, it, by no, way. it's oh, I know. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, Starbucks. The whole oh, <laughs> yeah, you close serious. You close Starbucks. That's serious, right? <laughs> I agree with you, Dan. Really yes, yes, very serious. Yeah. So, okay, so I think uh, we all agree that uh, Christine's uh, direction is that uh, we will be Zoom on February 8th, but we'll bring the, bring the topic back to rediscuss the next meeting after that if we want to continue. Right? Correct, and I will prepare a more formal staff report with a resolution attached, similar to what we did two weeks okay. ago. All right, thanks. And uh, Gwen, if you would uh, contact those two entities and... Um, I've been, I've, been, I've been in touch with Jerry with the Seroptimist, but if you'll contact them and just apologize and ask them if they're okay with just holding it over one more meeting. Yes, for sure, Mayor. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Okay. So thank you all for that. I appreciate the conversation. Um, item 10B, city manager updates. So Mark is going to give us um, several updates on the ARPA fund allocation, um, the wastewater treatment uh facility expansion, affordable housing funds, and PFE update study. Okay. Mark. Thank you. Um, there, so I've got four updates to do, and I thought I would just do these since I'm disappearing on you, um, that it would be a good time to, to just update you and the public on where we are on some of these issues. Uh, the first one, the ARPA discussion is a fairly, there's a fairly lengthy discussion here on that. The other three are actually pretty quick. Um, so let me start with ARPA. Um, I believe that Tom and Drury is, um, is with us tonight in one of the rooms here. Yes, he uh, is. And can uh, at some point join in on this. I want to thank Tom. Um, I want to thank Tom on two counts. One, his interest in helping us with the ARPA funds and just in general, Tom and Drury is such a, a good supporter and has been so supportive of me. So I want to thank him. But, um, the ARPA funds, as, as the council knows, we got some really good news a month ago um, that the feds finally freed up um, the bulk of the funds for um, spending by cities on a less restricted basis. Um, we were stalling for months here, trying to wait for the day that the feds issued guidelines that were more, um, that were more easily reached by cities like ours. And just about the time I'd finally given up, they did it. And so we are uh, 10 million of our 11.5 million is now pretty much unrestricted as if general fund money. Um, there's still audit requirements, and when you spend the money in certain ways, there's still requirements on how you spend it, but um, we can spend it on anything, basically, that we could spend general fund money on. Um, now, having said that, while we were working on this before, the council had, had said that we would spend roughly a million dollars of our previously restricted money. 
um, to fund two programs that, that and at least we, the council had generally accepted this. One was a business grant program and the other was a program to fund nonprofits um, to do uh, support recovery types of programs for people affected by COVID issues. And, um, and ideally we would have gotten those programs moving. The business community is already hurting. Um, the people that the nonprofits would serve are already hurting and it would be desirable to get this money out and operating. The problem of course, is that internally, we have really been hamstrung for staff support to do this kind of, of implementation, not actual implementation, but even to get it out to some entity that would provide that. Um, Tom and the chamber have issued um, an offer to, to help us by running this business grant program. That would be a decision. And we're not looking for answers and votes tonight. This is a discussion item. It's not an action item. But um, the city council could very well move forward with a program of that sort with the chamber. Um, what you would need to do in order to move forward on that is you'd need to enter into a contract with the chamber um, for the administration of the program. I believe that the program allows 10% toward administrative costs. I'm not 100% sure on that. I have to double check, but at least the CARES program, that's what the allocation was. Um, the council would have to decide how much of the money to allocate to the program. Um, we talked at one point about 300,000, but we also talked about a million dollars. So conceivably the council would have wanted to make that number bigger. Um, the council would need to alloc or need to indicate um, to the chamber what businesses um, you want to be eligible, what criteria would apply to businesses in order to be eligible, um, what kind of an award system. And by that, I mean, there's basically three different systems that cities have used in allocating CARES money and now ARPA money. Um, one is a random allocation from eligible applicants. So you take all the applicants, qualify them, and then you do a random selection. That's if you have more applicants than you have money. Um, the, another one is first come, first serve. Um, we did that in India. It worked fine. I would rather, I think, have done random allocation. And then the final one is to use some kind of a subjective rating system. Um, that can be done. It's just very more, much more complicated in order to do it. Um, and then finally, there's the issue of, of setting it up from the beginning so that you're able to audit what needs to be audited um, when the time comes to audit the money. The, the reason that's important is because cities that don't follow the, the rules are subject to having to repay the money. I am told that... Um, any business that applies for a business grant program um, will need to register with something called SAM.gov. I have no idea what SAM.gov is, but I am told that, that they have to register under that, um, which probably helps determine eligibility. For instance, um, they have to account for any other support they have received from federal, state, or county, if the county got the money from federal or state sources. Um, and there are criteria under which businesses would not be eligible if they had received other funds. Again, I don't know the details of that. I'm just told that's something that we'll have to be aware of if this program goes forward. Um, the city is required to provide 1099s to entities that receive the grants, uh, meaning they're taxable. Um, and just a lot of other kinds of things that you would expect to have on a federal program. Um, so that's basically where we are with doing a business grant program. Got to start somewhere and on an on a agenda soon. I hope the city council will decide if you want to move forward with this with the chamber, then some work needs to be done to create that contract. And then I think you're ready to go. Um, the other program we talked about, the nonprofit 
um, agencies that are interested in, in receiving funds to um, direct toward their work um, with the community is not something that we have talked about specifically. There was a suggestion yesterday that perhaps the community foundation might be interested in administering it. I have no idea if they would, but um, that would be an, a third party entity that wouldn't be an applicant that would be involved in, in managing it. There are, uh, there are also consulting firms that do this kind of work um, for pay and they would be an option. Um, the last thing I want to mention is that we have, aside from ARPA, we have the two programs that the city was awarded through the Housing Community Development Department of the state, state HCD. Um, those programs were applied for before I even got here, but we didn't get our award on that until I think it was in October this year. Um, there are two programs and these are specific programs. We can't change them because this is what we applied for and this is what got approved. One is a business support forgivable loan program, but it's different than this grant program we're talking about in several significant ways. Um, this program, by the way, is being administered by Wolf and Associates, which is the city's CDBG consultant. They were the party that put together the application and um, they would be the party that we would move forward with to administer because administration is fairly complex here. Um, eligible businesses have to have less than 25 employees and revenues of less than $3 million. Um, they have to create at least one new job, although it can be two part-time jobs or even more than two, um, of people making less than $33 an hour. That shouldn't be hard. Applicants have to register on SAM.gov um, and the underwriters for the loans <clears throat> need to be able to make a determination that it's a viable business. Um, there's about 350,000 net that will be available to us from the award that we received net of administrative costs. And it's estimated that we could award between six and eight businesses with these loans of probably around $50,000. So that's a as opposed to the business grant program where presumably you would be awarding smaller amounts but to more businesses. Um, the other HCD program is a micro enterprise grant program where the owners of the businesses have to qualify as below an income level. I don't know what that level is, but it's below an income level uh, the businesses must be within the city limits. There's a few types of businesses that are ineligible, but it seemed to me most of them were <laughs> identified as businesses creating illegal business activity, which seems pretty easy. Um, the awards can be used for working capital, for equipment, for new hires. Um, probably about 200,000 is what we have available to us from that grant. And it's estimated that about five such grants could be issued under that program. So those are the business support, community support grant monies that the city council has talked about um, moving forward on. I, I think obviously it's time to try, to try to move it because this is one that's needed. And, um, and obviously I'll be moving on, so I'm, giving you that update and turning it over to Sean and, and hopefully this will all work out. And I do think on that one, Tom was interested in talking. If you want to entertain that now before I go on to the other three. Yeah, that'd be great. Tom, go ahead. Good evening, good evening. Um, yeah, I really appreciate, Mark, everything you've done uh, working with us at the Chamber and, of course, Holly and Alyssa in the last year or so on these funds. Um, I put together a proposal and what we did with the CARES Act funding with the county. Uh, I also been researching other cities like Elk Grove. I just emailed Holly and Mark uh, their criteria to the businesses and their application. Um, I think we can get through this pretty simple if we can have a meeting and at least discuss it with 
maybe with Sean and uh, the mayor or whoever, and just kind of get the criteria uh, where we can where we can present it to the council. And I, I know the business community is really, believe it or not, I mean they're struggling more than ever. I mean, 2020, we were all shocked of closing businesses down and everything. But now we're kind of growing numb to the fact that businesses are shutting their doors for a week at a time or two days at a time. We had several here in Lincoln do that. And of course, some of our chamber members in Roseville and uh, Rockland, uh, same thing, uh, shut down because of COVID and lack of staff. And it's just really, again, we're all kind of getting numb to the fact that it's just real unfortunate. But two years ago, we were trying to do everything we could to help them. So I really applaud the city for at least just looking at this and, and trying to come up with the program for the business community. Um, and also the chamber, like I said, we, we can head it up and we can partner with the uh, Lincoln uh, Community Foundation and a couple other partners when it comes to the admin fee and all that of getting these programs out. Um, we have been meeting, talking about it. Uh, we sent out a survey to the business community and most of them did say the cash infusion is their number one issue um, because they spent their savings. They've, uh, you know, they, they're trying to retain their employees and uh, I, I can resend that to you. Um, but it was uh, the majority of people needed cash versus um, some other kind of a program. But um, with that, I'll just leave it at that. Um, I'm more than happy to help whatever way the chamber can. And um, again, we're, we're here to help. So whatever we can do. Great. Thank you, Tom. Um, before I turn over to the council, I, I just have a question. Um, Mark, Christine, Tom, how fast can we get a contract ready to bring to council? Is February 8th too soon? Can we do it at the end of February? Um, it, I Go ahead. Chris. I'm happy to work on that and get it on for February 8th. I, my comment is you need to figure out the criteria. Yeah. Well, yeah, we're going to, we're going to do that right now. Yeah. Uh, or start the conversation. I'm just curious. Well, I think, I think we can draft the contract so that it's contingent. Right. Um, so that we at least have their contract in place and they know they're going to be doing the work and then they can work with the city council to develop the criteria. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Okay. Thank you. All right, so let's open up to uh, the council for questions and comments. Um, Mayor Pro Tem Joyner. No real questions or comments. It sounds like we're setting foot on the right path. Uh, criteria is essential moving into this. And um, I guess a concern, I don't, I don't want us to overwhelm either the uh, mm -hmm. community foundation or, or the chamber. Uh, with the administration of these programs. Sounds like Tom has looked deep into it and has a pretty good sense of it before I have any opinions about whether the uh, community foundation is, is the right uh, venue for the, the um, not-for-profit side of it. I, I'd want to hear from them and, and, and see how they're doing on all of that. But it, it, I think we've got, we're setting, setting foot down the right path and uh, we want to get this money out and helping people as soon as we can. Good. Well, just, just as a uh, point of information for you, um, I sat with, met with uh, Jen uh, Bedwell on Saturday morning, and she does the books for LCF and a lot of other um, entities, nonprofits, and she actually just came on to do the, um, the books for the 4th of July Foundation, and um, she seemed really excited at the opportunity to help uh, Tom uh, administer the nonprofit side. So that's still up to council whether they want them to do it or not. But as long as they're not applying for any money, um, that I don't see a conflict with that. And Jan, I don't know if you know her, but she, she's really awesome. So I don't think they would be overwhelmed. I think they're, they want to help. So, and that, just make sure I'm not on mute again. Uh, and, and that's great, but I think I'd kind of want to hear from their board. Oh, sure. Sure. Make sure. sure that they've had that discussion. Um, and that is why the community foundation was set up was to yeah. take some of these uh, requests that come from the public that normally would have come uh, directly to council and and uh, create a uh, a fund from which an endowment from which they could address a lot of that. So this is right in that ballpark right. as well. Good. All right. Thank you, Councilmember Carlos Kent. Um, why can't we have a 
we have a workshop on Monday, on Monday, on the 1st of February. Yeah. Why don't we put this on the topic as far as the amount of money. And the criteria. And the, and the criteria. That's a good There's idea. No reason why we can't do that. What, Mark, what was already on the agenda for the workshop? Do you know? I don't know. I'm not here then. Oh, that's true. It, I haven't been working on that agenda. I uh, would guess nothing. I would guess yeah. nothing. <laughs> I, yeah, my suspicion, and Gwen can probably chime in, is that we've sort of anticipated it would be tentatively canceled just because. Well, I, I asked Sean that because we're meeting okay. that day and we scheduled our meeting to be right before that would start on the assumption okay. that there might be something he wants to bring forward on it. So this might okay. be right up that alley. We just need some staff direction because I don't think we have anything tentatively scheduled. Well, I think we have direction. Yeah, yeah. If I mean, if, if it's possible, let's uh, let's have the workshop and um, and put this at the top of the list. And and like Dan said, figure out how much we want us to give and the criteria for both business and nonprofit. Okay. Um, Councilmember and Lord I can said, have a draft oh, contract for you at that point too. Oh, perfect. Thank you, Christine. Councilmember Lordson, do you have questions or comments? No, uh, the only comment is I'll second or third, you know, as far as, uh, you know, deciding on the criteria at the uh, workshop, that'd be a very good idea. Okay, good, thanks. Councilmember Sohai, anything else? Yeah, my questions and comments are all gonna be when we are getting into the nitty gritty of specifics. I'm sure I'll have a lot when yeah, we're talking lot. about how to set it up and make sure that, you know, all of our T's are crossed, mm -hmm. but in terms of like moving forward with trying to figure out how to do it, I'm all in. I'd, yeah. I'd love to have that discussion. Good, good. Yeah, yeah. I think, oh, go ahead, Dan. The, um, did Mark, did you say that there are, uh, there are firms? I know you did for the, the HUD stuff, but that there are firms that like uh, function function like Tom's having the chamber function for the business loans. That there are firms that uh, that we could turn over the nonprofit stuff to. That we'll yeah. do it for ten percent. Yes, there's firms that specialize in CDBG um, management and the the ARPA. And CARES Act is very closely um, exactly. how CDBG administration is done in California. So they um, there are firms that are doing that kind of work on, on different ARPA aspects. Um, that's an option. I'm not I'm not saying you need to use one, but that no. is. No, I'm just uh, some of the foundations that I've worked with in the past. Uh, can't do this kind of thing for 10%. Right. Can't or won't. Right. So that, uh, but if you find firm that will, then that's fine. Okay. That's fine. All right. Okay. Let's uh, see if the public has any comment on this item. Yes, Mayor. I do have a hand raised. Gary McDonald, please go ahead. Thank you. I just wanted to say that I'm very appreciative of the fact that the council is looking at funding nonprofits in the area. I know that the mental health and the financial ability of families in Lincoln have definitely suffered over the pandemic. In fact, uh, and uh, as I've mentioned in numerous presentations, because I go out and speak a lot to different organizations, uh, different chambers, we have in, we've seen a 40% increase in suicidal ideation in the children that we're seeing at Lighthouse. As a matter of fact, we have two families that have a child that attempted suicide and thankfully failed. We have uh, seen an increased number of children that are cutting and other um, behaviors that are dangerous. So the funding will definitely uh, be used um, to improve the mental, should Lighthouse be awarded anything uh, or the other nonprofits, uh, it, is it is appreciated and, and definitely needed. So thank you for your time and your consideration. 
Okay, thank you, Gary. Thank you for everything you guys do. Any other public comments, Gwen? No, Mayor, no other hands are raised. Okay, so bringing back to the council, um, it sounds like we are gonna set this for workshop on uh, the, is that next Tuesday? Yeah, okay, yeah, Sorry. next Tuesday. Yes, the second. And um, we'll talk about criteria and how much money and look at a contract um, for the chamber to help administer this. Any other comments or questions on this item? It is, it's been our practice not to take action at the workshops, not to actually vote on anything. There's been a few exceptions, um, but I guess I'd recommend that we keep to that practice and, uh, and simply give direction to staff and then move the item to the, the next mm -hmm. council meeting. Yeah, and then we'll, then we'll take a vote on the eighth uh, after, we do, after we workshop it, yeah. I would agree with that. I would agree with that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, just, just to be clear, that's on February 2nd, that's Sean's second day. But he's not he's online right now, so. Uh... But, but I think he's anticipating a workshop because I tried to schedule with him when for that hour, assuming it was canceled and I got the hour before it. Um, on the assumption that he might okay. want to bring that's, some to the that's, workshop. That's great. Um, so how about we do this? How about we make this tentative and we check in with our incoming city manager too? I think that would be good. He's got a full first week. Yeah. But, but that doesn't mean that, again, I can't get started on drafting a contract and working with Tom and Drury because I'm sure he has lots of great ideas about yeah. criteria and things that we can bring back in a more fully fleshed out staff report that's ready to go as opposed to you know kind of going off half cocked right good okay thank you for that all right number two uh mark financial advisory services for the wastewater treatment expansion yes um i'm happy to say that uh we're continuing to move this one forward um i think the last time we talked about this I said I'd be bringing back a contract with um, Fieldman Rollap, the financial advisory firm. Turns out that their contract only calls for $30,000 in the interest of time and getting them going, I signed it. And um, if I won't be surprised if it goes higher and additions beyond 35, we'd have to bring back to the council. But, um, they're a very fine firm. They're, they know what they're doing, very highly experienced. And um, I feel very good about moving forward with them. Um, the other aspect of this that has to go at the same time is finishing the solid waste rate study that was started over a year ago by NBS, the other consulting firm. Um, we have been consulting with them. I say we, the county staff and Angela Frost and myself um, have been consulting with uh, NBS to get them going again. Um, and they believe that they can move that effort along. We're changing it a little bit because now there will be three different fees. There'll be a wastewater collection fee that the city has for its collection system a different fee that the county has for their collection system, the whole SMD one pipeline and all that. Um, and then there'll be the, the fee for the, the plant itself, the treatment at the plant. So that's a little different than how NBS started. The other aspect that's critical to our agreement on moving this forward is that the what they call the BOD content of the sewer flow, the wastewater flow, um, which is the heavy materials, we'll call it that, that go into the uh, flow that, that are more expensive to, to uh, process than regular flow. Um, the agreement there is that we will be working up a fee that those who produce the heavier BOD pay a higher fee that's a pro, a proportionate to the extra cost that's involved. So there is some work to be done on, on doing that. MBS didn't do the BOD study, West Yost engineering firm did it. And so West Yost and MBS have agreed to cooperate with us um, to work on that aspect of, of the fees. 
So all of that's moving. I mean, this is all behind the scenes and the world wouldn't see that, but the plans for the plant are pretty far along. Um, we just have to get the rest of this together. The final step in all of this, of course, is the government structure, um, which the two by two will be continuing to take up. We're working right now on trying to schedule a two by two meeting this, the week of February 14th. And um, I don't know whether that'll work out, but they're making calls and trying to get that scheduled now. Um, I, have, I have offered to come back and be part of that effort um, as a volunteer, um, which you all will need to confirm with your new city manager and let me know if I'm invited to, be, to continue to participate. Um, it would be my desire to do so. I just don't wanna walk away from this while it's in this stage. Um, and that's pretty much my update on that. So unless you, anybody has questions on that, there will be a two by two in February and there will be a report back to the council at that time. It, it's finalized the 15th. 15th, okay. All right. Uh, the other two items are really pretty quick. Um, affordable housing funds. I just thought it, it would be important to point out that um, when, when Housing Trust Placer came along with the project that didn't end up going forward, um, we, were, we, we looked into and, and realized that we have these two primary sources of funding. There's actually a third smaller one, but sources of funding that can be used for affordable housing, the primary being the old RDA set-aside money and the other being CDBG money. And there's a little bit of home fund money in there as well. Um, the easiest money to use is the RDA money, um, but the CDBG money needs to be used. And this is my, my point in raising this. The community development people for the state of California have let people know they're going to be very aggressive going after recovery of funds that have sat this long without being used. So it's really important, I think, to put this on an agenda, not on a council agenda, but on the staff's agenda to move something along on use of these funds. Our city has not in recent time had anybody on staff designated as the housing coordinator, CDBG, affordable housing, homelessness, um, you know, other services that relate to this whole housing arena. We need to do that. We need to, to go beyond doing just development services work and start getting into some of these other areas again. So I put, I put that on here just simply as a reminder that that's something that needs to be moved along before the city gets a letter taking that money away. Um, I think it's less than a million dollars, but you know, a few hundred thousand dollars is not something we wanna lose. Anything on that? Any questions on that? Okay. Um, the final one on here is the what we call the PFE update study. Um, the rest of the world calls it a development impact fee study, but the, we call the PFE update study. That has been drafted. That's a that's a monster. I sent it to the council. I hope you all had a chance to look at it. I'm sure you've all memorized all 200 and some pages. But it's, um, it's very important. <laughs> um, it, it's a study that is supposed to be done regularly. The last time we did it was 2012. Um, when we charge fees, they're supposed to relate back to a study that's a current study. The good news is we're probably undercharging. And because we're undercharging, people won't raise that issue. But someone could raise the issue. It, this study needs to be moved forward for consideration and eventually for adoption. So I would be remiss if I didn't make that a point of as I'm walking out. Did the same thing in Indio and they finally adopted the darn thing. So I am uh, I'm suggesting that this is something that's gotta be on a 2022 um, work agenda to get done. And with that, I'm done. I, this is the same study that's been sitting since 2019, has been run through BIA, 
and everybody else, why hasn't it come to us to approve it? Um, if there was a study in 2019, I'm unaware of it. This came to me in, I forget what the date's on the cover of the one that I sent to you, um, but it came to me since I've been here. Steve Prosser brought it in and said that Goodwin had, or Good, Goodwin had, had completed the study and brought it in. It, I did send it to the BIA since I've had it, but only then did I send it and they didn't say they'd seen it before. So I think it's a different, <coughs> at least yeah. it's an updated version. Dan, remember that after that other one went through, there were some issues with some of the um, like foundational assumptions, if I'm recalling correctly. And I think we had to go back at it. Yeah, but I thought that was essentially done before the uh, city engineer left. And that was a year ago. I'm just... Yeah, it's I think that this is the fruits of that. I think this is the result of that hiccup. Okay. It just took a really long time. Yeah, there, there were a lot of glitches in the spreadsheet that were discovered. Yeah. And, um, you know, we're also still trying to deal with some of our wastewater treatment and all, all that kind of stuff, which is obviously a critical component of the PFE fees as well. So... We're, it, it's been a work in progress and, and we've just been short staffed. We haven't had engineers to, to really help us work on it. And um, I know you guys get tired of hearing we're short staffed. Um, and then we've had kind of a turnover in consultants as well. well the, the good news on this right now is that the work on the study is done. Now we've got to do the process with the um, BIA and with the public. And that's very doable. Uh, are there any other questions on any of the last uh, three things that Mark just presented? No, none from council. Okay. Um, Gwen, are there any hands raised for the public for any of these items? No, Mayor. Okay. All right. Okay. Well, Mark, thank you so much for um, for the update on all those. Uh, Mm -hmm. Really appreciate that. Um, hang tight for a minute there, buddy. Um, council initiated business item 11. Do any of my colleagues on the council have any initiate uh, council initiated business? Mayor Pro Tem Joiner? Um, maybe one quick one. We all agreed a while back that uh, we owe the city attorney her review. I just wanted to check oh, yeah. in and see where we are on that process. I've been hoping to schedule it, but then we've gone to these virtual meetings and my preference would be to have it in person with you. Oh, definitely. Um, so I'm, I'm just kind of waiting until we can get a time and date where we can schedule it in person. I just don't want Maybe. you to think that we've dropped the ball on that. Not, not no, me. no, no, no. It hasn't, it hasn't been you at all. It's been me. I've scheduled it and then we went virtual and then I kicked it and we are still virtual. So Maybe um, we I'll, I'll, I'll wait until February 8th, uh, yeah. which is our next regular council meeting. And then we'll see where we are and I'll try to get it scheduled where we can do it in person. Right. I was going to say, let's, let's try <clears throat> for the mid to later half of February and get that, right. get that done. Great. Thank you. Hey, council member Carlos Kent, any business? No. Council member Lauritsen? No. Council member still high? Um. No, because I don't think uh, council initiated business would be initiating a giant thank you and warm send off to Mark, would it be? Yeah, we're going to get to that in just a second. All right, because so, that's yeah. the only thing I have on my mind. Okay, we're going to get to that in just a second. All right, information. Oh, I do have I do have one business thing. Um, Dan, maybe you can speak to this. And um, I actually did hear some information this morning on our joint. Uh, governance meeting. Um, I had a resident contact me about a pioneer issue um, that several, I, I guess everybody, a lot of people, I don't really know how many people use pioneer, but um, that um, on an average, they've been overcharged um, $8 and 11 cents. Like that's an average for, for quite a while. And the comment was, uh, we're supposed to be, you know, being charged less than what it would be for pg e and a lot of people are really angry about that. So I said, okay, I'll find out this morning. I forgot who the person, it was somebody who works for Pioneer, said that they've adjusted the rate and kind of explained 
and I forget the whole explanation, but that that would be corrected. Can you speak to that just re real quickly? Uh, that is that a real problem or not? Um, well, the problem is is right timing. You you have not been overcharged uh, because our rate was higher than PG and E. You've been that's what our rates were. Our rates are not set exactly coincident with PG and E. Uh, and the commitment of the of Pioneer is to keep the rates below PG&E. And we've done a heck of a job since the inception of Pioneer, but for the last four months, that hasn't, uh, that hasn't been possible. And we don't wanna change the rates and then four months later, yeah. change them again. Our rates are gonna change in uh, March. We have a meeting in February where we go over them, a public meeting, and then we um, publish them and then they go active. I can't remember the exact, but it's a rate setting thing. The commitment of Pioneer is to give uh, the commitment is if we can give a lower rate than PG&E, but the purpose of Pioneer goes way beyond that. And it turns out that the last numbers I saw, we're going to be, we've always said 3%. Yeah. We're going to be considerably above that come March. Okay. Okay. And, uh, but rates are rates, they're set, and they stay in place until a time. Oh, right, okay. okay, great, thank you. And I, you reminded me, I got had an email when I was in Hawaii <laughs> from Lena and I didn't respond to it, so. Okay. I'll probably okay. do that. Anyway. Okay. Great, thank you for that. Okay, that's the only uh, business I have. Um, any information items um, other than uh, our, our thank yous to Mark, because we're gonna all do that in just a second. Any other information items, uh, Mayor Pro Tem Joiner? No. Okay, uh, Council Member Carlskin, any information items? Not really, except that I should say that the uh, WAPMA Western Placer Waste Management Authority reaffirmed their original vote to uh, award the contract to a company from Texas for the new mm -hmm. system. And so we went through, we affirmed it or we uh, approved it and then we reaffirmed it because uh, uh, the other contractor didn't think they had a fair deal. Yeah, that was a good meeting. You guys did a good job on that. Councilmember Lordson, any information items? No information items for me. Okay, and then Councilmember Silhai. Not tonight. Okay, all right. So I'm gonna I'll I'll go last. So Council Councilmember Silhai, would you like to start? Um, uh, oh, Mark, you got your hand raised. Did you want to say something yeah. first, or can we talk Let about? Let us you say first? nice things about you first, Mark, he, and then he hates big send offs. <laughs> just a heads up. I'm going to disregard his comfort level. They, they muted let... you as well, Mark. Yeah. I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't right. even know how to raise my hand. I'm not sure how that got raised. Sorry. Uh, okay. All right. All no, right. Alyssa, mayor, as as mayor, you go right ahead and um, are you, we'll are echo you all your comments. Are you sure? Okay. Absolutely. All right. Well, I mean, what how, what what can we say uh, without going on and on and on? Uh, I mean, we could, you know, I could get super emotional, but I won't. Mark. Um, I'm super grateful that you applied for this interim job. I remember, and I told you this before that, and it wasn't your fault, but when you were having a hard time getting on the Zoom call with us and you had to use your phone or whatever, my thought was, who is this guy? Um, but you just have been such a godsend. Um, 
I mean, nothing is ever perfect, right? You've been throwing a lot of curveballs. <laughs> um, you've had to pick up a lot of extra stuff that we weren't anticipating. But what really, I mean, your professionalism and the fact that, I mean, I'm just so blessed that you came here when, when everybody in the, in the city business knows you, right? And that you brought just a, a level of legitimacy and professionalism uh, to Lincoln. And I just really appreciate that. I appreciate that you hung in there on the hard days uh, when it seemed like everything was going crazy and it, it still is. You've you've been a good friend. You've been uh, you. I've learned a lot from you, and I just really want to say from the bottom of my heart, thank you for applying, and thank you for making that trip back and forth from Fresno every week. That can't be easy. Thank your wife for her sacrifice of time, uh, because I know that's not easy, right? And um, did you? I don't know. Did you receive your basket yet at home? Did, okay. I have, no, I haven't been home. Okay. <laughs> well, I don't know where they're delivering, but we all pitched in or we're all going to pitch in and we sent you a gift. I really wanted to try to do a reception for you uh, tonight, but then we remembered, oh yeah, we're on Zoom and then you're going to be gone. And with, you know, COVID and all that, I really wanted to do an in-person reception so staff could come, so council and any public who wanted to come. So I'm sorry we weren't able to do that. Maybe later when you come back, you know, as a consultant or whatever, we could have like an informal little, you know, party or something. But just from the bottom of my heart, uh, thank you so much for everything you've done for and for falling in love with our city. Because and 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 what I think is this is not goodbye. It's we'll see you later because I know we'll see you later. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. Uh, are we going to go in order or you guys want to just jump in? Mayor Pro Tem Joyner, you want to go? All right, we'll go. Absolutely. Right. Um, so, Mark, I, I truly want to thank you for the wisdom and professionalism and vision that you have brought to our city. I've been through a number of city managers now, and you have taught me uh, a great deal, not just through uh, your sharing of um, your experiences and your knowledge, uh, but in the things you looked at and the things you found that no one in the past um, had apparently ever considered doing. Um, and so that is such an incredibly valuable thing. We were in closed session today talking about exactly one of those types of, of things where uh, after 13 years on the council, that was the very first time that I had ever heard a particular piece of information. It shouldn't be that way. Everyone should be as knowledgeable and experienced and as good as you are. Um, so let me just say, I guess we're to agree with Holly, we are blessed that you, for some reason, uh, took a look at our request for help, thought that might be an interesting challenge and jumped in. I think you have uh, given us a solid foundation for Sean to come in and build upon. And uh, because of your work, um, I think that Lincoln has a very bright future and I'm, I'll be grateful for many years to come. And I hope we can pull you back once in a while just for fun and, and work on some projects that, that need doing. Um, we couldn't have asked for anybody better. I have shared uh, time and time again with others that you are one of the best city managers in California. I believe that when you came on board, I believe it even more now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Councilmember Carl Kent. I'm surprised because my idea of what you were going to be like when I heard you took the interview the first day that you were really retired and then took the job from that, whether you really had all your marbles. <laughs> uh, because I don't think we uh, wasted any time laying out the, the problems and the, and the opportunities, some, some of them insurmountable opportunities that we had in Lincoln, and you just grabbed them. And I... Uh, have enjoyed 
your counsel, your professionalism, and particularly enjoyed watching your interplay uh, with uh, on Kojo with the uh, county staff and your ability to, to uh, rationalize and uh, bring logic to the problem. And I, I just am in awe of the, your ability to bring up anecdotal information on any possible city subject that I could ever think of. <laughs> Every problem you had, maybe not a solution, but you'd seen it and you tried to work. So I, I go along with everybody. I hope we end up using you in a, in a consulting basis where it makes sense. And I hope uh, those are projects that I'm involved in because you're fun to work with. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Council Member Lordson, go ahead. Yeah, I want to thank uh, Mark. I mean, it was great working with you, especially on the wastewater treatment plant, the two, Dakota 2x2. And thank you for um, adjusting your hours like you did, you know, as a, as a retired annuitant, you know, so that you can work the maximum amount of time and and uh, stretch it to uh, until John gets here. I know what the, I know what that's all about, having been a retired annuitant with the federal system. So yeah, and all in all, I mean, you know, you've been a great help to the city, and um, and I want to thank you. I think we're in a better place for it. Thank you, Bill. All right, and Council Member so high. I love that I get to be the last one because I of think you're probably squirming in your chair and deeply uncomfortable with all of the accolades. And if you ask Dan, I can talk forever. So um, it's fitting that I get to be last to just lay copious amounts of thanks on you. Um, I echo everything that my colleague said. I think that at the time that we needed to go out to find an interim city manager, it was more like a bat signal. And uh, we really needed the right person to be able to come and just get us through so that we could continue on the trajectory that we had started. It was a really difficult time to lose that momentum. And um, you never know, right, when you're going out for an interim, if, if you're going to be able to get someone who wants to be more than a seat warmer. Um, and, and then you showed up and you have absolutely held our city together, held our staff together. Um, what I learned from you is what a council and city manager relationship should look like, how that functions the right way, the best way. I think what a city manager and staff relationship that is motivating and healthy and positive looks like. And I hope that we remember those lessons and we demand that um, moving forward. I think that we wouldn't have gotten someone um, like Sean to come um, if you hadn't been here. And I'm really excited about the tone that the city is about to take on. And I absolutely credit your leadership um, and support in helping us get there. Um, so I think that our city can be really excited about the future that's coming. Um, but I would also really like to thank you for your mm -hmm. contribution to that and acknowledge that we only got there because you were really adamant in making sure that we could get there. And all of our staff and council really wanted to get there. And we made a really good team these last six or so months. Um, and so I will just say a see you later instead of a goodbye. But also that means that we'll have to see you later. So, yes, um, and again, what Holly said, thank your wife, because I know the personal sacrifices that you made for us and they did not go unnoticed. And if you get home and see an empty basket, there was actually something in there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> there was lots in there. And, you know, just one last comment too, before we let you share your thoughts, Mark. Um, the other thing that I really appreciate is how much time you spent with Sean to, to, to fill him in and to get him ready to step in and start on day one. I mean, not like Alyssa said, you didn't just you know, warm the seat and just bide your time and collect your paycheck. Like you really worked hard to get him ready. And uh, that is much appreciated. So I wanted to say that too. Would you like to say anything before we adjourn tonight? Yeah, I'll, I'll say a couple of things. Um, I've been doing this long, long, long time. I, I, my first city council meeting was in October of 1972. The first meeting where I was a staff member with the city, city of Clovis. 
And um, that's a long time ago. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I look at tonight and I think to myself, well, if I don't do this again, this might be the last one that I ever do. It's actually a very emotional time for me. Um, I am, uh, I'm grateful for the chance to come here. Um, it's not a matter of, of feeling like anybody needs to thank me. I'm grateful for the chance to do this. I collect these experiences as if they're children. Um, I have loved this experience. I've loved this community. It's just a great place full of really good people. Um, and um, I'd do it again tomorrow. I mean, the 33 trips from Fresno in 36 weeks, <laughs> man, I wouldn't look forward to that, but, uh, <laughs> but I would do this experience again tomorrow. Um, we, you've made such a good hire in Sean. You're going to be so happy with him and he's going to be so happy with you. Um, I, I can't wait to, to see the good things that happen here. Um, the management challenges in this city, while substantial, are exciting to be part of. And I know that Sean's going to do a great job and, um, you know, for me, discovering Sean through that process was a reward, too. I'm so glad to know there's people like him in my profession who are coming along. Um, and I, I have got to thank the people on the staff that have been so welcoming to me. You know, being an interim is a weird thing. You're, you're an interloper. You know, you're somebody that comes in inevitably I'm going to tell people that they didn't do things the way that I think they ought to have done them. That, what a welcoming kind of thing for this interloper to do. Um, but that's just part of the gig, you know, and it, and it happens. But I got to work with such great people here. Christine, thank you for what you've been in, uh, in support and work in this community. I mean, a woman who goes out into the community and becomes part of it um, in so many ways. Mm -hmm. um, Gwen Scanlon, which, who is the best city clerk I've ever worked with. I mean, just absolutely <laughs> phenomenal. Um, Jen Reiling is, is right and left arm, you know? I mean, she takes care of us. Um, she does such a, such a great job, and she cares so much about the employees in this community. Um, I've got to work with all of these phenomenal people, um, all the people on this floor, all the people on the other floors. I got to be a department head several times in the last six months and um, got to work with all of those staffs. And some of those staffs are really under, under the gun, you know, they're really day in and day out doing so much and they're, they're so, they work so diligently. And I thank all the department heads. Um, I thank all of those staff people that I've had such a good time working with. Um, some of the people that fly under the radar screen, I've been trying to figure out this week, how do I say thank you to people like Angela Frost and Scott Boynton um, in public works where we lost our director and they stepped up and they took on so many extra duties without anybody giving them anything for doing it. Um, and there's people like that all over the organization. So um, great opportunity for me. Absolutely would do it again. I truly believe, I've said this before, this is, I've said this is one of the best councils I've worked with, and I've worked with a lot of councils. This might be the best council I've worked with. I mean, you all, I mean, on top of the fact, and, and look, I'm walking out the door tomorrow. I get nothing out of this, right? Um, you're the, the brightest group of people that I've worked with on a council in a long, long time. And you know how to disagree with each other. And I'm so grateful to work with a group of people that know how to disagree. In this world, we got to figure that talent out. That's, that's a missing talent. And the fact that you can role model that and do what you do, I can't wait until the world comes back to meetings so they can see you in action, if no other reason, because good local go government Good local democracy. That's what the na nation's built on. So 
Anyway, thank you for the opportunity. I'm sorry I talked so long. No, nope, and I will uh, I will miss you, and 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 I will see you. Yes, see you. We will miss you. We'll miss you. All right. Well, if there's nothing else. It is 7:57, and we are adjourned. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Safe travels back, Mark. Thank you, bye, Mark. Thank you. All right. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.